Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. So a little bit of a different video this week. We've um, done some work installing a new oval track on this end of the table. As you can see, it runs around the outer loop there. And what we want to do is we want to get some, some more trains running basically. We're going to have a bridge here eventually. I'm going to lower this part of the table and have the, the sea change levels with, a, with some sort of a waterfall, etc. on this side. So... But in the meantime, what we're going to try and do is get this train working um, with a 9 volt power supply. Um, and as you can see, it is the 7897 uh, remote control train that we're using, which is a sort of a hybrid uh, train that was developed in between the 9 volt system and the power function system, which was the precursor to the powered up, the one that, that came before it. So as you can see, um, the remote control is a beast. Um, so we don't want to use that if we can avoid it and um, compared to the power functions remote control um, it's huge and the power functions one is, is quite neat I don't like using either I'm gonna have these trains running with an Arduino as you can see there's a passing loop and um, just here behind us and that's going to be underneath another part of the city and we want the trains to automatically stop and change track there while um, where you're only going to see the trains on this track going over the bridge here in this area. So what we're going to do is we're going to see how we can get this train working with a 9 volt track but using an old redundant broken 9 volt motor and a newer power functions motor. So um, let me just dock this and we'll get to it. So guys as you can see here's the locomotive. Um, this train, because it's a sort of a hybrid, is very strange. <laughs> the base plate that the locomotives are built on is um, has this battery compartment in it, which we will try to get out. And as you can see, well, it's tight. I doubt there was ever many batteries in this one. There we go. That's it. So that's the innards of that battery compartment. Um, and as you can see, it takes three and three is six 1.5 volt batteries, making up the full nine volts for the motor. Um, the battery compartment is molded to this base plate, as I said, along with uh, the upper part of it here, which is, well, it's huge. But I, I can understand what they were doing with the, with the design when they were trying to get this to work. This has, oh, we'll just move him out of the way. Um, what I don't like about this design is you've got these clear glass panels, windows that are looking straight at the battery compartment. The locomotive that they built on the far end does not have that and we don't have the battery compartment obviously in it and it looks much better but again they didn't use the same length of base plate so it's not really, not very uniform and it doesn't look that well. So I got two of these trains and what we're going to do is mesh them together and hopefully get rid of this and make it look a little bit better as well. So as I said, this is a hybrid. The IR receivers are also built in to the uh, base plate of the locomotives. As you can see, there's one here on each side. Look, I get, I get what they were doing. It's pretty good for what they were trying at the time, but I suppose it's as a precursor to the power functions. Uh, power functions is just so much better. And I like neither because what we want to do is get them working on nine volts. So as I said, this is a hybrid. It's in between power functions and the 9 volt system so the motor form factor is very similar to the 9 volt and it's got the same connector on it etc as well so we actually want don't want to use this one right now it has no pickups it's got no metal wheels so it can't pick up the current from the track but neither can the standard power functions uh, which is what we're going to end up using so we'll show you how we're going to do that now if we put these away Sorry, we're going to replace this bogey as well at the back with the redundant 9 volt uh, motor. So we just want to find out which one is our redundant motor now. So we'll have a look at this. Oh, that doesn't want to come back. I suppose that's maybe usable so this one that definitely looks like a good one so we'll try one of the ones that i have here without a 
neat. No, that one is dead. So what we want to do is we want to use that and we want to use a newer power functions motor. One of the ones that has the, set, the newer cable on it and um, just before the powered up range. So if we take this locomotive, we take these connectors back in. Now the reason I'm doing this with this motor is really because of the connectors that I have available. I don't have all of the connectors, the old type two by twos that would actually work with the older motor. So I have to use an adapter cable for the power functions. So where's our old motor instead? So this is it here. So what we want to do is, there's our connections. There's our adapter cable for the power functions. And if I run that in here, Again, we put on everything it needs, maybe not. There we go. This will leave the makings of two bogies. Uh, for the end carriage so we should only need one motor for this train in total so if we connect that in there this is our cable from the motor and we connect them together now I'm going to hide these cables a little bit better when we're finished and we will get the lights working as well but this should fingers crossed uh, now work and there we go. So that's using the old motor, the redundant broken nine volt motor. Basically, we're just using that as a set of electrical pickups to pick up the current from the metal rails. We're bringing that into the train, jumping it across and connecting it to a power functions motor. So if I put this back together, something will go wrong, of course. Now I don't know if that, we're not gonna get those cables down like that. So we'll stuff them all in the front there. And in the back. And yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna have trouble getting that cable across there. So I'm gonna to have to come up with a separate idea to do that. Um, probably around the side of the, uh, the battery bank would be the best bet or um or even through it maybe or we can change the the roof altogether the roof line completely maybe that's the way to do it so either way that's it on now so i am happy with that let me fix this roof and we'll come back so guys we ended up going a bit nuclear I actually rewired the old 9 volt motor with uh, two singles from an alarm cable, uh, red and black from an alarm cable. I did that in order to route the cable through the lid without actually rebuilding the entire roof. So you can see the cable goes through the roof there. And I used an old uh, connector here to, uh, to patch into as well split it and then ran the um ran the power function cable up and cut the plug off because i don't need that anymore uh, anybody who's wondering how to connect the nine volt uh, to the power functions and make it work it's the two center cores on the power functions cable um that i always use and it seems to work uh, okay for me 
so we will now roll that up and put it away behind our driver that's a nice neat little area for it actually we put the lid on and we can put the cab on which actually i noticed this when i built it and i don't know if this is for making it easy to take the, the cab off or not but it seems to be a strange design that it doesn't fit flush here and none of them do so it's a bit strange but it's not the end of the world so we'll put that down on the track and we will give it a break give it a go and there we go so let's see so let's see what that is like one or two coaches on it yeah and I think that'll be good enough for another locomotive on it as well And next week, guys, or the next update, I, I don't know if I can promise next week or not, uh, given the week that's in it and work commitments, etc. Um, this Arduino and this motor shield, we're going to connect the two of them uh, to the track and get rid of this because we don't like this. So until the next time, guys, see you later.